how's it going? Welcome back to the Convier Station. I am Ben, and this is... Howdy, I'm Josh. Howdy, that's his name. <laughs> uh, and we're going to talk about... What was it today? It was... Uh, uh, VR and Habits. Yeah. Yeah, an idea, yeah, yeah. a bit of a segue from VR and Habits and how they, how they kind of join together. Correct. Yeah, so my, uh, I, I love these stories about how VR has helped real people. And one of my favorite stories... I have a lot of, I always say, one of my favorite stories. One of my favorite stories <laughs> is, like about, is about a gentleman who, who, uh, who suffered from quadriplegia, or at the very least paraplegic in his legs. Um, and through the combination, so backstory, yes, this gentleman has no, no movement in his legs. Zero. Zero. Movement in his arms, fine. So no movement in his legs. And from the, from, just from a, a background standpoint, the best thing to understand about that, about not having the use of his legs, is that it is tied to your brain. Mm -hmm. That wiring in your brain, something happened. That the wires in your brain have have either gone backwards, they're tied, or whatever it might be, but it has caused you to forget how to walk. Right? Essentially, if you're if you're unable to use your legs, your brain will forget how to use them. Period. Even if you yep. have no function. In them. So, uh, so gentlemen, subjects to VR. VR simulation of VR walking. So literally all you're seeing in the VR simulation is um, you're in an environment and your avatar is walking. And if you look down, you can see legs walking. And essentially, so what they're doing is they're gonna put him in that simulation. On top of that, they're gonna put robotics on him, robotic legs. And they're gonna tie that into his brain or at least feed it into his brain. Yeah. So the brain has the ability to use the robotic legs to make him actually move. And the visual side of it is that he's witnessing, without the robotics, his body moving. The simulation of legs walking and the actual yes. motion of doing it. Now, they're gonna train him for months on how to use the robotics, how to, how to be able to talk with the robotics using his brain, brain impulses. And at the end of the day, with enough, <laughs> with enough practice in the, with the robotics on, and the VR on, he was able to successfully rewire parts of his brain to regain motion in his legs. And yes. he actually did. Not full motion, Not full course, motion, but, but to regain any motion is incredible. When you think about for decades, decades, since, since medicine really began, paraplegics and quadriplegics were thought to be a one-way street. Yep. You become a paraplegic, there is no going back. It's impossible. We can't. We can't rewire the brain. It's too complex. Mm -hmm. Well, mm, now we can. <laughs> well, now we're learning that the best way to do it is to rewire it yourself. Yeah. Let the brain rewire itself. Right. So amazing idea. But the simply with the repetition idea behind it, that yes. if you if you practice something enough with your brain, you will create that connection. And in his case, it's not that he was fixing the connection that that taught him how to walk. He was creating a new connection. This is how I'm going to relearn how to walk, which is just fascinating. So um, habits, good, creating good habits. Um, I, I want to talk about driving. Driving is by far one of the biggest epi um, epidemics that the world is definitely facing or has faced for a long, long time. Bad drivers, good drivers, dangerous driving, distracted driving is obviously the new one. Drunk driving. A lot of it is, is it comes back to you know, poor choices. Um, but how does VR, how, how, how we've talked about this, how is VR? We have, we yeah, have talked about how, this how is the VR, arcade. <laughs> yes, how is VR potentially going to change that? How can we so, see VR changing it? I think one of the coolest things is, um, VR or driving simulations, uh, which have been a thing for a long time, but are extremely expensive. Yeah. But getting to the point where we can just use a VR headset, which is extremely accessible, um, you get to the point where maybe we can teach people to drive without having them on the road. Maybe we can afford to have them come into an, a, a place or an arcade like us <laughs> and practice driving. We'll put a chair in there, uh, give them a, a, a driving handle and just make sure everything's in the right spot. And then you'll learn to drive in a VR arcade in a safe environment. Uh, you can do what you, you want to do. You can make mistakes. And you can still learn in VR. This is really cool because it is a one-to-one. -one. All you have to do is just make sure that you have the right pieces in real life, 
like a steering wheel and um, uh, a, a gear shifter to go into park and, and drive and all that stuff. Um, yeah. And then make sure that you have the, the foot pedals and then just in VR, you can do it. No problem. It would be a little bit more expensive, but uh, if you had one or two rigs, you could do that permanently. Yeah. But the coolest thing is you can also teach people to drive better. Uh, daily, that's what we're talking about, right, <laughs> is, is building good habits. So if you think about what it takes to build a good habit when you're driving, when you're learning to drive, you have to be in a car to do it. Yes. It's, there's an inherent danger that you run into, not only for yourself, but for everybody else on the road, that if you're unexperienced and you're trying to build good habits, there's a potential risk involved. With VR, you eliminate the risk, but you still build the good habits. Oh, yeah. Right? You're, you're doing it without the risk, of, really, of anything. So, um, you know, for winter driving, so this is definitely a nor you know, Canada thing or northern states that have to deal with snow, but when you are learning to drive, uh, and they talk about when you're dealing with ice or specifically black ice. So nighttime, you can't see the ice and you're going fast and you get into a skid. Let's see out there, comment on the video. What, how do you get out of a skid when you're driving on ice? What way do you turn the wheel? Let's see if you remember, because I don't necessarily remember all the time because I don't drive in skids. I don't hit ice very often. I no. can avoid that. In yeah. fact, I don't, I've never been able to practice Driving out of skid, getting yeah. out of skid because I don't want to be in the scenario in the first place. Now I, I did that once actually. We're gonna quickly go over that because <laughs> now I didn't skid on the road. I did it on in a large parking lot. Okay. Um, that was empty for whatever reason. I can't remember why, but it was it's been empty for a while. Uh, and what we did was the night before we went and dropped ice on the on the parking lot, and w then I would drive really fast. And because it was three hundred yards. Uh, I could drive from one side to the other, and then I could break myself out of a skid, which was really cool, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it yeah. was cool to ex experience, but it's not something that most people can try. No, and 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 granted, I mean, I'm glad nothing went wrong. But if something had, and you totaled your car, yeah, that's not that's not cheap. No, that's, that's not cheap. So, so my simple suggestion then, and hopefully this has already been done, or if it will, or it's going to be done, is. You create that simulation in VR and you have those 16 year olds come in and you say, listen, we are not going to put you in a dangerous, we're not going to put you in real danger, but you are about to simulate it so that you know what it's like, so that you can feel the rush of adrenaline that hits you when you're about to slam into a car because you can't control your own vehicle. Yeah. You don't want to be in that for real. You don't want the real outcomes of that, but you want to be able to create the good habits Absolutely. that are needed to try to reduce that, to reduce the damage done or prevent the damage from happening. And you can, and VR has the ability to do that, to create those good habits and to simulate real scenarios. I mean, that's the other thing too, is you can watch a video all day long of simulated driving. And it's all, that's all it is, is it's simulated. Very, it's not yeah. real. <laughs> you can go in and record real footage of driving and accidents and be able to say, we're gonna take this valuable content and we're gonna put it in VR we're going to have users come in and they're going to really see what it's like to be caught in a they're, snowstorm. They're going to live Or this. Yep. driving with no visibility. Or better yet, they talk about driving drunk. You really shouldn't be doing you it. You could but, do it in VR. But which if you want to know what it's like so that you know how bad it is and how dangerous it is, yeah, you could do it in VR. You could simulate what it's like to drive drunk. And it. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to really know that because I don't want to find myself in that scenario. But speaking of driving drunk, there. Please don't drive drunk before your booking when you come to controlv.ca. Absolutely. Or controlvarcade.com to book, uh, specifically because we don't want you to be in danger before yeah. coming to play uh, or in general. Uh, and if you would like to make your own business or run an arcade, make sure to check us out at virtualrealityfranchise.com. And if you want to hit us up, maybe ask us a couple of questions, make sure to email us, us, email us at I love VR at controlvrcade.com. We got it right that time. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. But anyways, I'll see you guys later.